Welcome to the Man Cave, the only podcast hosted by two best friends with nothing in common except their names. I'm Mandy Kaplan. And I'm Mandy Fabian. And every week, we go ahead and test the limits of our friendship by arguing over movies, books, the latest trends, and of course, Mandy's dumb ideas. Grab a couch. Let's get to it. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, feeling good about today. <laughs> I think, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just saying hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> You're shooting daggers. What are you up to? What'd you do this week besides that which shall go unnamed? America, this is how a podcast goes when one co-host <laughs> is not talking to the other co-host. So I will talk directly to you, America. And I will tell you that... Careful, America, she'll borrow money. Ouch. One time. uh, I listen to Smartless. On occasion, I'm I'm not consistent anymore because sometimes I'm not a fan of who they're interviewing or I get a little burnt out. But this week's episode of Smartless, the podcast with Will Arnett, Jason Bateman, and Sean Hayes. My best friends. They interviewed one of my original true loves, Jon Stewart. She's grabbing her breasts while she says this. Am I allowed to tell people that you are literally... Did you even know that you were grabbing your breasts as America, you were saying? <laughs> will you tell Mandy that, yes, I can grab my breasts when I talk about Jon Stewart? My breasts, which I just flashed at at Mandy Fabian. I'm going to I'm going to fest up about that. We zoom while we do this and <laughs> she needed a pick me up. I yep. And I gave I, it to her. I'm I gave up. her two. I'm definitely up. Yep. <laughs> Did you listen to Smartless? With- I ha- no, but I I will. Now, I mean, I love Smartless. I went back all the way to the beginning and started listening to every episode because I loved it so much. But now that I know it's Jon Stewart, I don't think I can wade through the Tiffany Haddishes of it all. I think I need to get there. Yeah. And it makes you realize, like, why the world needs him oh, and why my yeah. fiery loins need him. <laughs> he is, he, he is so, he, he, he is in such rare air. I'm speechless. <laughs> He's so smart, so passionate, yep. so funny, so charming, so cute. Yeah. And then we find yep. out on this smart list spoiler, he plays soccer. I'm like, kill me now. Just what? shoot me now. Oh my God, is, no way. Yeah. He's athletic. Yes. He does not come across as athletic. I would have said the same. Oh my God. But he he would love that you're calling him so handsome though. You know what I mean? Oh, he His, is. I've always had a thing for him but when yes. you when you don't get a fix of him for many years yeah then you you get a little fix and it's like i imagine that when i quit heroin and then i take <laughs> it up again that's what this will feel like oh, you know that, that first, cycle when you oh when you i know i've the wagon been there with you, you that the whole first time. <laughs> hit. so he's going to be back on television so now you're going to be like you're going to be get addicted again yeah. Yeah. So we're going to have to cancel this podcast. Yeah. No, I, I'm I gonna figured be as much. <laughs> yeah. Watching some Apple TV, Jon Stewart, and. Yeah. No, I didn't like doing out. it anyway. Is that appropriate for me to say? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty done anyway. So this is good timing. I would have um, preferred it in private, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, if you would have been talking to me. Um, yeah. No, he's great. And I can't wait to get to get with him again. Mm. That sounded weird, Mm. but you know what I mean? Like, I love him. Um, Well, I did not listen to Smartless this week because I have been listening to and gobbling up something that you will hate. But God, our listeners might not. I so love it. Uh, It's this author named Martha Beck. And she wrote this book called The Way of Integrity. I know you're falling asleep. It's like I said, The Way, uh, and you fell asleep. I know. You said Martha Beck, like just the <laughs> name, and I no, knew I would hate this. She's super interesting. She has a fascinating life. She gave up Mormonism and like started becoming this. She went from being this sort of like follow the rules, step inside the lines, you know, follower to being a total badass who like coaches people on like live your best life. So. I feel like she wears no deodorant and denim socks. 
that is patently, fu- I've never seen her or smelled her. So I can't, this been the pandemic. How was I ever supposed to? No, she's really or funny. denim deodorant and no socks. She's really. It's one of those two. <laughs> but she's funny. She's really funny. So I've been listening Says to you. her book and I'm going to tell you something. This is coming, okay? This is coming. I ordered the book after listening to it. I'm going to do the exercises and we will see. But come November 20th, big day for me, I am going to take her challenge of never telling a lie for a year. Oh my it. God, you should see Kaplan's face right now. It's, it's I love it because you're a goddamn liar. Oh my God, any which way I can. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I've barely told you anything, you know, from the secrets game we played, you don't know anything about me. I so, know. With the, exception of, with the exception of what is the budget of your film, I will not tell a lie. But even then I don't have to tell a lie because all I have to say is I'm not at liberty to say, right? I mean, it's wow. perfect. 30,000. Wow. Oh my God, I said it. Oh Jesus. It's already happening. <laughs> um, no. So how Thank about you, that? Martha Beck. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm excited about the adventure. Yeah. So it's made me. That's what this book is about the way of integrity. It's about not lying. It's about being living your truth. So all of her books are because, yes, I am listening to her other book as well, which is Finding Your True North. Uh, No, no, Finding Your North Star. It's all about like, because I'm a people pleaser, right? So I have a tendency to like, the minute somebody needs something or wants me to do something, or I have a tendency to go, okay, and not ever think about like what I really want and what I need to do, you know? And, and mm-hmm. I never, I never want to have an argument if I think it's going to upset somebody, you know, it's all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I've been mm-hmm. listening to these books and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting new idea of a way to live. Uh, and I'm loving it. I'm getting jazzed, like just vicariously through all the people that she talks to. So, I mean, it, I'm just saying, I know I disagree with you all the time, but it's, it's rare air in here, you know, like... <laughs> That's our second rare air. I, I know, just want just to point out. Up. Well, they rhyme. It's fun to say. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's I, I, I'm in love with Martha Beck right now. And it's making me a better person, which is which is leads me to the the uh, movie that I made you watch this week. Um, the story <laughs> of the face, the story of Rod Stewart, a 54 mm-hmm. minute documentary on Amazon Prime. Uh, I I I feel compelled to apologize. Uh, it was not an that act of friendship. Great. Now, I didn't know that it was such not an act of friendship. Um, but I have to say the 54 minutes felt like five hours and 40 days. And yeah. it was maybe the worst documentary I've ever seen. And I love live music documentaries. Uh, maybe I'm, you know, blowing the lead here. Is that the term? F- giving the lead? Filling the lead? What is it? Shaking the lead? What's that saying? Burying the lead is oh, usually that's it. the term. Yeah. Burying the Blowing lead. Blowing yeah. is a whole other concept <laughs> that we'll talk about thing. off air. Maybe yeah. I'm not supposed to give it up so fast. That's been said about me a lot. Uh, right. That I utterly hated every second of this documentary. But babies sort of hate loved it a little bit. But my my, I have to apologize to you because it was a terrible, like as a film, as a documentary, as anything of any substance, it was terrible. Terrible. Can we admit that it was not a documentary? It was a promo, <laughs> right? We, <laughs> a 54 minute promo to sell yeah. albums. It was one interview. It was one interview of Rod Stewart that was intercut. Where, with entire music videos of his and then concert footage. May I ask you a question, (laughs) Mandy Fabian? Um, Where was that interview shot? On a bus? On a boat? On a boat, Mandy. And and what was Rod Stewart wearing in the wheelhouse of his yacht? I feel like it was a tuxedo. I don't remember. A suit? It was a captain's uniform. Oh, yeah, that's right. He did an interview for this documentary, and I know you can all hear those air quotes, Mm -hmm. in a silky captain's uniform circa 1988. He's very nautical. That captain's uniform is a theme for him if you watched all 25 of his videos. Oh, dear Lord. I will say, technology is a miracle because... I now know how to turn off the sound and turn on subtitles, which I did for 70% of this movie. So I wouldn't have to hear his voice. Oh, now that 
that's just that's cheating. I'll take I'll take it. Uh, you can call or- me a cheater, but I'm alive today because I didn't slip my own wrists the long way, the right, the correct Look- way. I didn't do that because I didn't have to hear his raspy, awful voice. Okay, wait. It's not awful. It's a great voice. You just don't like it. But what what don't you like about it? Is it the rasp? Do you not like like Bob Dylan? Not that I would compare them as artists, but I'm just saying they have they have I don't unusual... like Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I don't like Bob Dylan either, but I do like Rod Stewart. But I don't want to smother Bob Dylan's face with my <laughs> butt cheeks and poop in his mouth the way I want to do with Rod See, Stewart. now that sounds like you like him. That's a positive. So I don't understand. <laughs> it really we depends. just got an insight into your dating life. I'll tell you that right or now. Or Rod Stewart's. I mean, he seems like that. It, he, I, I'm surprised that's not on one of his album covers. It feels like it would totally be his jam, not to use the word jam like that, because now it brings up other pictures. But yeah. Yeah. However, he did state outright I didn't write down a time code, but I wish I had. He was like, and I'm the straightest guy you'll ever (laughs) meet. Yeah. Which, yeah. I thought the first half of the documentary, I was like, oh, I didn't know Rod Stewart was gay. Right. Yeah. I just assumed. But maybe he's overcompensating. Maybe he's still from that generation a little bit. I don't know. Or maybe not. Maybe he is totally straight. Maybe he's just god awful in every way (laughs) shape or form so i found it on amazon and it had three out of five stars from the 41 people who rated it (laughs) and it this movie is 20 years old so that tells you something right yes yeah i guess true fans wouldn't go back and tell people how it really was um yeah it uh i look it had the opposite effect. You know, I was a Rod Stewart fan. I mean, I I enjoy his music. I like his voice. But here's the thing, man. Mm. The deep mm-hmm. dive on this doc actually made me not like his music. It is the weirdest thing. I had this nostalgic memory of him. I still really like his voice. I love the way he sings. Mm-hmm. But mm. I mm. listened to his songs and I was like, oh, dear God, this is terrible. Like, like most of his songs, some of them were pretty good. You know, like, I think Tonight's the Night is still a great song, right? But there's a lot of them you're like, oh, geez, this is the song that I thought was so great. It's so, like, Yacht Rocky, but not even as good as Yacht Rock. It's like, it's not even, it's like soft, I don't know. It's, it's not even good, soft, adult, soft rock. So I'm glad you gave me that intro because I would like to do a, a reading of <laughs> oh, one God. of the songs. <laughs> okay. I wonder if it's the same one. <laughs> so Pete, do what you want with the editing on this. It's at <laughs> nine minutes and eight seconds. You can cut in between myself and Rod or you can, I don't know, slit your throat because you don't want to listen to him, whatever. <laughs> Here, Here's one of those songs you're talking about. Are you ready? Are yeah, we ready? I'm ready. In the morning, don't say you love me. Cause I'll only kick you out of the door. (laughs) I know your name is Rita, cause your perfume's smelling sweeter since when I saw you down on the floor. (laughs) You won't need too much persuading. I don't mean to sound degrading. But with a face like that, you got nothing to laugh about. Red lips, hair, and fingernails. I hear you're a mean old Jezebel. Let's go upstairs and read my tarot cards. Come on. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen. Well, the lyrics of Rod Stewart. Yeah, I mean, that's just pure poetry right there. Um, I will say, I think they beat out for me. I think they beat out Def Leppard's Pour Some Sugar on Me. Terrible song. Yeah. I think that this actually maybe beat that out. Like so many of the Rod Stewart songs, I was like, wow, it's offensive and awful. And I just sort of hummed along. It's like all those 70s and 80s songs that you like loved in your childhood. And then when you actually listen to it, like Sad Eyes, that that song, Sad Eyes, you know that song, Sad Eyes? Mm-hmm. It's the one Take about... Take me away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
sad eyes is basically, hi, I've been cheating on my wife with you, but now she's coming back into town. So you need to turn around and I don't want to see that sad shit. Like it is, it's the meanest, most awful song, but it, it sings like a love song. So when it comes on, you're like, oh, sad eyes. It's, you knew right. that come a day. Like it's terrible. Yeah. It's basically like, don't Written cry at me. Written by my ex-boyfriend and <laughs> fuck you for bringing that up. <laughs> come on. You never dated that guy. You would have been two, right? In the 80s, you would have been like two. Well, not that specific guy, but I feel like I dated, you know, that guy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so in a weird way, this Rod Stewart documentary, I think, brought us closer because not only did I not enjoy the movie, and I always enjoy rock documentaries. I really do. Even if I don't love the music, I love watching musicians and their whole lives and everything. This was so boring. And the videos yeah. were so bad. And yeah. and uh yeah, and and it actually made me like Rod Stewart's actual music and his personality less. However, it did give me a great idea. Lay it on me. Uh, okay. This isn't like a quote. This isn't like a part of the film that I can play for people. Um, mm. And I, I wouldn't even recommend... Oh, wait, it's free on Amazon Prime, isn't it? It's free, right? I it was, believe so. It didn't I, cost it you anything. It came up on a screen that said rent it for two ninety nine, And I was like, I would rather just <laughs> go over to Fabian's house and kill her family than pay two ninety nine <laughs> to watch Rod Stewart. But then I found it for free and, and we cool now. Oh, we good. Cool. Yeah, it didn't yeah. cost you anything except your dignity and like 54, 54 precious minutes, minutes of, of your life that you'll never time. get back. Yeah, yeah I know. I mm -hmm. know it costs. I know. I know what it costs you. Um, but anyway, there, if you if you will indulge me, I was noticing in one of his earlier concerts, the early concert footage when I was still like, Remember where his nipples school? were hanging out of his tank top. Yeah. That one. Yeah. He had, and then he had yeah. those fierce, like yellow satin pants with the sort of tie around the waist. And let me tell you something with his haircut, I challenge you. I know you don't want to do this, but you may want to. I challenge you to go back in because if you put my face on his body <laughs> and hair and outfit, I was like, Oh dear God, I look like Rod Stewart. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, that no. could be me. No, no, no man. No, you should watch, watch his butt, watch the way he walks and watch him on stage. I'm like, oh, that could be me. I look very oh much gosh. like Rod Stewart in the 70s. No. And by the way, so my, my proposal is that come Halloween, which is right around the bend, I do the Rod Stewart 70s. You do the Rod Stewart 80s with the blonde mullet and we, we get at least one pick together. That's my challenge to you. Accept it or not. Um, Denied. <laughs> You don't have to sing like him. Denied. Oh, you're no fun anymore. What do you want to be? Like I mean, a I guess I could I could be um Bonnie Tyler and no one would know the difference. That's true, right? exactly. <laughs> or when he sang, was that Kim Carnes on stage with him? They didn't Chiron her. Oh, I think right? it was Kim Carnes, yeah. Mm -hmm. she and they sounded Tina fantastic. Turner. They gave them no Chirons, no credit. Yeah. Because Rod Stewart is that much of a dick that he's like, no, don't tell people who I'm singing with. It should be all about me. Okay. Well, there were credits at the end of the film. You just, um... but you don't feature somebody <laughs> singing their heart out on a, on a massive stage in front of thousands of people and not tell the, yeah. the watcher who they're watching. Well, that's the film. I mean, clearly these were not great filmmakers. They also did not highlight Tina Turner, which, you know, I mean, yeah. That's, it, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's a filmmaking issue. That's not a, you know, that's not a Rod Stewart. He personally, I don't even know if he signed off on that documentary. Boy, what a, well, he had very little interesting to say. I don't know if we really, do, do we even need to talk about the movie anymore? Are there any more interesting elements? Oh, yeah. I have more oh. bashing to do. Oh, okay. All right. Well, good. Lay it on me. So a song comes on. In which he is, this is one of his terrible, grainy, awful, cheap videos. And he's on a boat and he's singing a song and it's at 1409. Pete, hit it. I am sailing. I am sailing. not sound like a preschool song where you learn about shapes and colors it's interesting like, i thought you were I didn't write down the lyrics subtitles. to this one but like it was so 
basic. He's so basic and stupid. <laughs> and if if your four-year-old wrote, wrote a song like this, you would be like, isn't that so cute? My little four-year-old wrote this song. Yeah, but I think it's interesting like that you keep uh, forcing our audience to listen to something that you hate so much. Like, are you trying to awaken the Rod Stewart passion inside them? Like, if you want his body and you think it's sexy, I mean, come on, Mandy, just, <sighs> just let us know. Oh, Is that what's gosh. happening here? <laughs> you know, I had that Blondes the... Have More Fun album cover when I was, uh, well, I mean, we had that album. Was that the name of one of his albums? Yeah, that was the only one I think we had, Blondes Have More okay. Fun. And it has him, you know, squeezing the the ass of a brunette lady in some sort of leopard pantsuit. And I looked at it and I remember really wondering, like taking it very literally as kids do, like feeling terrible that I wasn't blonde because I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, blondes have more fun. I mean, yes, but that, but that's a, a topic for a different podcast. <laughs> we do. Okay. I guess it's true. I mean, I, would you say that you have more fun than I do? Yeah. Come on. Nobody <laughs> has fun like me. That can't be right. All right, we're gonna, that's going to have to be something we... We'll have to have like a a chart on our website. <laughs> we'll keep track. We'll keep fun points. But man, everything you just said about him on the cover of an album, you said squeezing, yeah. and it made me so deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> like Rod Stewart squeezing makes me so angry. I can't explain it. Like my teeth hurt when I think about him. It's it's a real true Wait, loathing. Why is it's it? It's not why? just like a simple like, oh, I don't care for his music. There is something about him and everything he is and every cell of his existence. Did you feel that, that way about Def Leppard and White Snake and no. Judas Priest and all of this totally uh, no. misogynistic, no. sexist? No. You don't? No. I would no, I would say I don't care for that music but I would never have gotten the kind of spine-twisting rage. Like, I... I Why? Uh, because of his music or his voice? But what can is you it? see me? Like, my skin is crawling. No, he I, makes my look, skin it's, crawl. It's very something clear, but about why? His, his face and his energy and everything he ever was in the music world, like, all he ever put out there was this disgusting untalented sexual energy and it just makes me uncomfortable and I hate him. You know, this is, you know, this is the beginning of a rom-com, right? You know, this is like a meet cute deal. Like, and, and I'm going to end up with him in the end. I'm just saying like, oh, I can't stand his music and the, his flamboyant yeah. costumes and the way he prances about on stage. Who does he think he is? Well, yeah. I can't have dinner with him tonight. That would be impossible. <laughs> I, you know, I see it coming. I love that I sound like an old movie, breathless, you know, <laughs> standard RP movie actress of the 1940s. Thank you. <laughs> um, I want to point out one thing he said. Oh, it was so dull. In the in this, you know, these interviews, and let's put that in quotes, like basically they were like, brag about yourself and we'll just cut it into all your videos and this will be great. Um, at one point he said he would, and I'm putting this in direct quotes, shoot all the critics if he had his way about music critics. That's yeah. what he said. Because they critics didn't like him because they were correct. And he came out on this thing and because said, I would cool. shoot all of them if I had my way. Well, okay, now you're making it sound like he's some sort of sociopath. I, I think you're giving him way more credit. I, 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 No, he's just a cocky Brit. He's a guy who got lucky. He was he grew up poor and he's like, the only way off the streets really is music. And I don't even I didn't hear what the other thing was. And, you know, he got lucky. He got lucky that he was able to, like, wear the funny pants and twirl a mic stand. And that's it. Like, he got lucky. He's just a Brit who got lucky. And I know you don't like his voice, but his voice is very unique. And in the beginning, when he was that first with that first band faces, I will say that band was tight. Those musicians were tight. They had a tight sound. And I was like, okay, I get it. Now, where it went after that, I couldn't believe it kept going because I was like, oh, oh, he was good for like a minute. He still has a great voice, I think. I like his voice. You don't. That's fine. That's we. That's that's fine. But like, 
And I get that he he's gross, but like he's not some sort of sociopath. Like he's not a crazy person who's really going to shoot his critics. He's just not that bright. He's n- we all heard he he's, shoved a gerbil up his ass, right? That I'm not was the only one who heard Ju- this. Richard Gere. That was Richard I Gere. I heard this about Rod Stewart. Of I'm, course, I'm you consulting did. Consulting our research department. <laughs> Uh, look, if somebody and, said that he was a closeted homosexual, that I would believe that because, you know, I really was. I was like, oh, he's gay. And then and then he just well, wasn't. Then I was like, oh, no, he's just British. But then he that, had all that tabloid <laughs> stuff about all those women that he like fucked over. And oh, am I, supposed, am I allowed to say the F-bomb? Well, he did. Yeah. He had, no, our our show has an E on it. We can say whatever we want. Easy to easy to listen to. Easy listening. <laughs> easy listening. <laughs> Extra? Oh, maybe the kids call it extra. I like that. Okay, I can't find it, but I thought I heard that the gerbil thing about him. I, I mean, the research department can't find it. Sorry. Oh, the research. I think that you, over the last 20 years, you have taken every negative piece of celebrity press and you have applied it to Rod Stewart. Like, you're like, Rod Absolutely. Stewart won't let Britney out of her conservatorship. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. But do you know what he did say? Rod Stewart He's, block called it Obamacare. <laughs> okay, I I will uh, acknowledge that that I might project other <laughs> rage towards him, but this is one thing he said, and then I will let this movie go forever and never and <laughs> never think about it again. He said, "Sometimes I think of a lyric. Sometimes I think of a theme." <laughs> But there are literally thousands of different ways I can write a song. <laughs> Fuck you, Rod Stewart. <laughs> I'm I'm skipping right to it and saying zero man jobs. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. You know, I'm with you there. I get it. Thank and God. Honestly, I found nothing redeeming about this except I'm gonna give it two man jobs. For the emotional reaction it produces in audiences, um, I'll give it two. And I'm I am enjoying I'm enjoying uh, your response to this. <laughs> it's like, oh, it, and because it, it gave us a great Halloween costume idea, which you're rejecting, but you yes. are wrong to do so. So, yes, because um, right, I've always so, wanted to go as Wayne and Garth with Jeremy. Oh, that's sweet. Who's Jeremy? Piven. I've heard he's a sweetheart. Oh, I love that guy. Never heard a bad thing about him. Oh, right? let me see if there's a story of Jeremy Piven on Amazon. <laughs> that'll be your next, that'll be the next pick. All right. Yeah. All right. So now, now, Mandy, I yes, have Mandy. a game. I've created a game for you, but you don't get to hear about it until after we <gasps> let the nice people who are listening to our podcast no, let our fandies know about a little uh, little membership plan they can get in on if they want to be like, you know, super VIP. Tease. Man, I have a quiz for you. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do the Elks, Costco, and the T-Birds have in common? I know. They're all spelled with letters. Yes. Good job. Yeah, but what I was looking for was membership. And now you, Mandy Fabian, and all of our listeners, a.k.a. Fandies, can become Man Cave members. (laughs) You said members. (laughs) Okay. Just head over to truestory.fm slash man cave. The most it's going to cost you is $5 a month. As members, <laughs> you said it again. <laughs> really? You'll get early access to shows in your very own personal podcast feed, member bonus episodes, and a birthday message from your favorite Mandy. Ooh, I'm going to have to clear my calendar. I think you'll be fine. We're back. Now that we've heard the membership spiel, I yeah. also want to add that there is swag oh. at T Public, T E E. Yeah. P-U-B-L-I-C-K dot com. Well, almost. There's actually no K in public. Just T public. Like, you know, you would probably spell it. Probably slash man cave. Well, almost. You can search for man cave when you get to T public with no K. Or you can just scroll down in your show notes and I'll drop a link in there. Thanks. And there's sweatshirts oh. and t-shirts and coffee mugs and such fun stuff with us. 
Yeah. Like I'm going to wear a sweatshirt with my own face on it. Oh yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's the, I actually love the artwork. Pete designed the artwork. Yes. It's so good. And I think yeah. it's, it's great for the coffee mugs and the mouse pads. And then, you know, like I said, once we do our Halloween bit, probably that picture could go up on a, on a, co- you know what? You keep rejecting it. Don't but you'll... hold your breath. <laughs> Lay okay. a game on me. All right. You, all right. You ready? Well, okay. Yeah. So you sort of almost started playing this game earlier in the podcast. Um, you, you said, I would rather kill, come to your uh-huh. house and kill your whole family than spend $2.99 yes. on this documentary. So thematically, yes. um, I feel like this is an, uh, this is an obvious choice. We are going to play Would You Rather. Oh, no, no, no. Jenga. (laughs) God. Um, No, we are going to play Would You Rather the Rod Stewart version. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Can I just say none of the above and we can just move on? No. Um, No, because there's either or. Have you never played? Okay. Yeah. Um, Yep. Okay. So here we go. Number one. <clears throat> would you rather go on a date with Rod Stewart or, and I want you to take these seriously. I mean, I want you okay. to really think about this. If, if these are okay. genuine things you have to choose between. Okay. okay. Go on a date with Rod Stewart or work on a farm for six months. <laughs> Definitely a date with Rod Stewart. Okay. okay. He's got money. Oh, uh-huh, okay. I could go to a fancy dinner. <laughs> it's true. Right? Yeah. Good glass of wine. Yep. Really like a solid seafood meal. And then I would never have to call him again. So it's less of a time commitment. And I could fake an injury and get out of there. <laughs> like oh. I would be like, excuse me, I yeah. have blinding yeah. anal leakage. Yeah. I need to leave. Yeah. And, and just scoot. Yeah. And when you get blinding anal leakage on a farm, you still have to do your hours. Like, you you know, you, Absolutely. you still right. got to pick the carrots. So yes, I'm no fool. I think you, I think you did the right thing. Okay, good, good. Good to know Thank that you. your, your passion, your hatred for Rod Stewart is not as big as your hatred for shoveling cow poop. Great. Um, <laughs> okay. Number two. Would Never you... done it, but We'll what? See. You've never shoveled cow shit? Oh, no. well, you've got time. Number two, listen to Rod Stewart's Christmas album, top to bottom, or mm. or mm. convert to Catholicism. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know how long the classes are, and I know oh, God, being a Catholic... <laughs> Being a Catholic, you don't you don't necessarily have to go to church, but you would have to convert to Catholicism. So you either right. have to listen to Rod Stewart's Christmas oh. album, or I would listen to the album. Yes, okay, mm. yeah, there's mm. some good numbers on there. Mm. Oh God, it makes everything <laughs> hurt. Like my scalp is on See, fire thinking about y- it. Yeah, but in a way, you're being true to your integrity, right? Thank you, Martha Beck, because you know she's. Jewish, not going to convert to Catholicism, even though it's between her and Rod Stewart and a nice warm glass of eggnog with rum. Okay. Um, number three, would you, this is a serious question. This is not a joke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would you watch that documentary again mm-hmm. or legally change Casey's name to Rod Stewart Clavens? Legally Clavin's? change Casey's name to Rod Stewart Clavens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, that's so great. I actually had the liberty of having the paperwork sent to your house. This is going to be so fun. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Great. Okay. All right. Next one. Would you rather perform one song from the Rod Stewart musical, Tonight's the Night, in your next miscast? <laughs> tickets tickets on sale at Eventbrite. October yeah, but when th- everybody hears this, it'll be after the show. Oh, all right. Well, then we'll, so okay. we'll tell them. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you, though. <laughs> Very sweet. Or give me $50. That's an actual real one. Like, you have to do one or the other. Is there actually a Rod Stewart musical? Oh, yes, there is. Do you remember the scene in The Exorcist where (laughs) Regan is stabbing her vagina with the crucifix? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Could that be option C? Because I would rather do that than 
ever be even have knowledge that there is a Rod Stewart musical that breaks my heart. <laughs> there is. There is. It's called Tonight's the Night. It's a jukebox musical. Well, featuring all doing. of Rod's songs. So if you would if you do not want to perform one of those songs in your miscast then you have to give me $50. So thank you. Okay. Who plays Rod Stewart? Is it like the ghost of Rush Limbaugh? Is this like, (laughs) that's like, I can't imagine anything worse than a Rod Stewart musical except one starring Rush Limbaugh. I I don't know, except I I mean, I haven't looked at Broadway HD and seen if they offer clips of it, but I will. All right. I'll give you a hundred dollars. I'll give you a thousand dollars. I'll give you. Okay. You know, you only have to give me 50 because uh, the next one... I'll give you a kidney. I would do anything not to see that musical. You only owe me $50 because the next one also involves you giving me money. So number oh, okay. five, and this is the last mm-hmm. one. Okay. Would you rather give me 50 mm-hmm. more dollars? Because I, mm-hmm. I knew you'd pick that. Um, yep. Or co-sing Tonight's the Night, the karaoke version with me right now. Well, that sounds like heaven on earth. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. I, oh. Are I, we doing a naked version or an actual version? Well, I I think it should be actual. Um, okay. And I, I was going to try to, can I, oh, I can't share my screen. Oh, but you know I'm what? I'm going to share my screen. I, I Okay, great. Because I could do this. You ready? Okay, here's an ad for Only Murders in the Building, which I adore. <gasps> can you make it full screen? Oh, yeah, because you're, you're not wearing your reading glasses? <laughs> Or are you? I am. Oh, yeah. I need you to take the uh, verse. I don't know, know the verse. I want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay away from my window. Yeah. Stay away from my back door. To... Not a gay you reference. You think it's a real back door? Disconnect the telephone line. Relax, baby, and draw that blind. Oh, God, oh, yeah. this is the worst thing this I've ever heard in my whole life. Lake. See how he's keeping her trapped in? Kick off his shoes and sit right down. Loosen up that pretty French gown. It's French. That's how you know she's classy. Let me pour you a good long you. drink. It's all one note, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. baby, Ooh, don't you don't hesitate, because tonight, tonight, the night. Yeah, that's it. Uh-huh. It's gonna be, it's gonna be all right, right. Cause, cause I love you, girl, ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna, gonna stop, stop us, us now. now. <laughs> can we stop this now, please? <laughs> yeah, 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 you can stop it now. I, that is. I mean, I am impressed. And now I can't work tomorrow because my voice is shot. <laughs> you never, ever have to do that again. Thank so you. So thank you for indulging me and our listeners. Very happy that you, I'm sure, that you watched uh, Rod Stewart. Oh, I did. And, um, well, if anybody wants to take sides, where where can they do that, <laughs> man? What do you mean if they want to take sides? I think it's pretty obvious in this one, okay? Um. You would reach out to me at Mandy Fab on Instagram and uh, Mandy Fabian on Facebook. And at Mandy underscore Kaplan underscore Clavens on Instagram and Facebook. Please give me some support. This was difficult. This was (laughs) a test for me and I passed it because I did it. You did. I'm very, I, I was, I really am very impressed. I, I, this felt like seven hours of, of Rod. Right. And, you know, in college, that was fun, but, you know. But we're not young ladies anymore. <laughs> All right. So after we hear the credits, I'm going to tell you what you have to watch for next week. And of course, I'm so much nicer than you are. Of course. I'm sure I'm looking forward to it. Here are those credits. The Man Cave is a production of True Story FM. Engineering by Pete Wright. Music by Ian Post. Find the show at truestory.fm slash man cave. And if your podcast app allows ratings and reviews, please consider doing just that for our show. There is a movie that I have referenced, you know, you and I also get to guest co-host the Saturday matinee for the next reel on occasion. Oh, yeah. And Dear it, Evan Hansen. What? 
Dear Evan Hansen? No. 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 Okay. But it, uh, it's a ton of fun when we get to go on there and talk about movies and we make fun lists. And I find myself referencing this movie every other time I co-host and everybody's like, you're crazy. Why do you love that movie so much? But I love it so much. You know, those movies that when you catch them on TV at any point, you just stop what you're doing. And it's like, this is my afternoon now. No, Dirty dancing. Yeah. Well, oh, but you don't watch things over and over. No, I don't watch I don't watch TV in the middle of the day, but <laughs> <laughs> point taken. This is one that might change your your world. And I hope you enjoy oh. it as much as I do because it makes me laugh so hard. So we are going to watch one of the funniest movies I've ever seen that I love so much. The Jaws. remake of Vacation. 2015, starring Ed Helms and Christina Applegate. And it is laugh out loud, rib cracking funny. I love this movie so much. I'm so excited to watch it again. I'm so excited for you to love it. And if you don't love it, (laughs) we've got issues. Oh my God, you know I'm going to hate it. I know. But I know you are. I am excited to watch it. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay, not with great. The kids. No, this is not can a movie I, say I can watch. Not I was just... with the kids. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Rim job. We're all the same. Not with the kids. <laughs> You'll still get <laughs> okay, that joke great. next week. Rim job. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe we'll give it rim jobs instead of man jobs. We I don't might. know. That sounds great. All right. All right. Vacation is one of my favorite things to do. So why wouldn't it be one of my favorite things to watch? I hope um, it is. I really do. Okay. Well, until next week, then. And next week, our game is going to be the chug run. You'll get that next week. Does it involve beer and a funnel? Yes. Woo! Yep, it sure does. (laughs) All right. See you next week. Love ya. Love you. Love you.